All right, my first completely off-grid project, my dad and I did. So the water comes out, out of the lake, goes up the standpipe. So that standpipe keeps the lake at level. What we did was we added this pipe here and then took a branch off of that. I've got some valves so I can do different isolations there. And then the feed goes back up to a header tank or a standpipe up here, which gives us about 10 feet of fall. And then we come out of that and it's open to the air to let the pressure out. And then we get a 10 foot fall with, at about a 14 degree angle, about 40 feet of pipe into the high gram pump. So we've had, uh, we had some PVC fittings in here and uh, the PVC 22 and a half uh, blew out after about a month. So this is a um, conduit, 22 and a half conduit piece that, that's holding up so far. Eventually we'll replace all this with metal pipe. But for now, it goes into the high gram pump, which uh, we got from Borscht Engineering. A uh, shout out to Borscht. Uh, those guys are great. This is a production ram pump. Inside there's a uh, uh, glass ball uh, doing the, letting the water by. It has a set of fingers under here that is adjustable up and down so you can set the stroke of the glass ball, letting the water out. Then inside, the, the little window got fogged up, but this is a clear window. There's a pinball in there that is the check valve. Every time you hear that click, that's the check valve letting water into the pressure tank, but won't let water back out. And then the uh, the service line comes off of there. We're running a just over 40 psi. It goes through uh, this service line and into the hill, and on up the hill, it rises 85 feet vertically. And we're about 1,500 feet downrange. And uh, I'll go up there and show you that end of it. And uh, we'll see you there. All right, here we are at the top of the hill. Water line comes up along our fence over there and then curves underground here. And then the uh, water coming in goes up this pipe. We have a, a really neat... Uh, flow gauge here thanks to Mark Zwicky for that and uh, we can actually monitor uh, we've got 249,370 odd gallons we've pumped with this pump to date uh, haven't seen a flow meter on another one that's uh, that's really neat so the water goes up and it goes in that second from the top that's the input the very top here is an overflow. Overflow comes back down, goes underground here, then comes up and lays on the ground. Ends up over in the pasture. The overflow goes into a water feeder. And then um, our service line comes off the bottom, comes down this one. We have a spigot here if we want water. It goes underneath, ties into the uh, pasture's water system. We can send water to any one of a number of water spigots over there. So we've got about, oh, 12, 13 feet to the top and maybe nine feet at the bottom if, it, if the water level's low. Gives us about five PSI. Ideally, we'd have that tank up there maybe 25 to 50 feet to get some really decent water pressure, but uh, we had to deal with what we had. And uh, this 550 gallon tank works pretty good. So here we are up on top. 550 gallon poly tank. We got it at, I think, tractor supply. Um, so it's full. The water coming in comes through here. We have this set at an angle so that the water will first want to go into the tank. And then if it gets too high, before it comes out the top over here, it will go down this line and go to my overflow that I talked about. We do have a very small bleed hole in there, 
Otherwise, you'll create a siphon and you'll act, it, it, it causes all kinds of problems. So we drill the little hole to let air in to make sure we don't get a siphon there. The uh, service line come, taps into the bottom of the tank, goes down like I showed before, and services everything else. This tower itself uh, was fabricated from some old materials that we had left around. These are some pipe H frames that would have been buried in the ground. We uh, banded them together and, and lashed them. And then we put some railroad ties. And then we uh, planked this with uh, two by sixes. And then, and then placed our poly tank up here. So 550 gallons about, oh, to the top of this water level, we're about uh, 10, 12 feet above the ground level. That gives us our pressure. We get about five PSI to the spigots out there based on the elevation from this head right here. So here's another quick look at this H-frame stand we built, this tower. Now ideally, It'd be nice if that was up there somewhere. If we had 25 to 50 foot ahead, we'd get some respectable pressure. Uh, we had these sitting around, uh, these old H frames, they would normally be uh, fence posting that would be buried in the ground. We placed them on blocks and used all the height we could get. We lashed them together with some high tensile banding and we even double lapped it with some uh, stainless steel uh, uh, bands and then uh, once we got it level as we could where we thought it would last we put the the uh, railroad ties and then uh, and then planked it up there the 550 gallon poly up top and uh, that gives us a pretty decent um, to the top there like I said about 12 feet maybe nine feet to the uh, bottom. If your tank is empty, you're gonna get about nine. And we're getting about a gallon a minute of flow from the lake. So uh, we could probably do a little better with some metal pipe like we talked about. Uh, if we can get that fixed, uh, we will get a little more flow. Um, there's all kinds of options, all kinds of things you can do to improve your efficiency. And uh, this is a learning process. So we have all these chickens and the, all these livestock pens here. And uh, the water from down there comes up and it services these, uh, these uh, float valve water tanks. Um, the service line takes care of all that. That's the bottom of the tank. And, w and I even leave a little trickle going. This is the chickens like this. So the chickens come up here and uh, and they, uh, they get, just get a constant flow because the water's got to go somewhere. So I go ahead and leave a nice little flow for them. That's out of the service line bottom of the tank. So right here we have the overflow from the top of the tank. And uh, that just pipe just lays on the ground for most of the way. You can kind of see over there the, the tank in the distance. Right now I just have it laying on the ground coming over here to this. So finally, I also have uh, from our well, our well water comes up to here and I have a, a valve under here that uh, will let the, uh, I can turn that off. Otherwise, if I open that valve, it sends well pressure. It back feeds into the uh, pastures and actually into the water tank. So I have the option right here, between the two valves, I can set which one I wanna service the pasture with. Right now with this one open, um, we're getting the water from the well into the whole pasture system. And then anytime I open any one of these spigots uh, or the float valves, they will take from that. Um, if for some reason my hydram pump fails down there, I can turn these valves here and I can back feed well pressure into these things so the cows don't go out without water. The other alternative to that is if I want to back flush the entire system, I can send well pressure to that tank and I can back flush the entire 
line going down to the lake if it happens to get sediment in it or if I want to prime it. So there's a couple benefits to having this tied into a well pressure system. That's the only non off grid part of this whole thing right now. But uh, it's pretty much uh, self sustaining.